Uh, so I'm going through my list of ideas and topics that were not programming related and I just wanted to start making videos on whatever I really want to make videos on. I don't want to feel like I'm pigeonholed into, you know, just talking about learning how to code. And I, you know, this topic is going to be a little weird and I'm not really sure like where I'm going to go with this, but I thought that it's worth sharing because maybe there's some kids out there or some young adults or even people my age who um, maybe didn't grow up in the best circumstances and maybe had a really rough childhood or a really, really rough life growing up and feel like that they're not meant to make it out and maybe they feel like that's just who they are and where they're gonna be for the rest of their lives. So I grew up in a pretty bad neighborhood. Um, you know, there's always a worse neighborhood. There's always a worse place that you could be. You can always be poorer than you were. And there's always going to be somebody who just ha had it worse than you did. But I, I didn't grow up in a nice neighborhood. I didn't grow up in the suburbs. Although I've lived in the suburbs in my adult life, I grew up in a really bad area in Miami. And growing up, I had, I had a lot of friends and acquaintances that didn't make it out. I, I've got a lot of friends who you know have been in and out of the system when I was a juvenile I was arrested a bunch of times and I was in and out of the system before I was 18 I was arrested four times some of my friends that I grew up around are killers and they're drug dealers and they're drug addicts and they're thieves and they are just not great people and I wasn't a good person either in my heart I was always good but just you know the old victim of my surroundings right you grow up in that kind of stuff at some point you decide, well, I wanna be cool or I wanna be accepted and you start hanging out with the wrong crowd because really the wrong crowd is everywhere and it's really difficult to avoid it. So it just kind of happens. And if you didn't grow up like that, you wouldn't understand and it's hard to understand. My wife has a hard time understanding because she grew up on 20 acres in the middle of the woods and had a 4,000 square foot house growing up. And I grew up in an efficiency in the back of my grandma and uncle's house with me and my mom sharing a one bedroom, you know, like studio. And that's where I lived pretty much my whole childhood until we moved out of Miami. And when I think about how things played out for some of the people that I grew up with, and I think about how things played out for me, I almost feel, I don't know, kind of like, I, I, I don't know why me, like I, I got lucky, you know, my mom decided to move us out of there after I got arrested for the fourth time and I was facing some pretty serious charges. And and, I, and when I think back to like some of my childhood friends who are no longer here or are in jail for the rest of their lives, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, man, how, how did this work out so nicely for me? And it wasn't that I just moved out and things got better because when you're looking for trouble, you're always going to find trouble. And when I moved to Vegas, I was still homesick and I still was about that life. And even though I've always been able to kind of hold down a steady job, I've always been involved in other things on the side that weren't always legal and weren't always the best things. You know, I, I've got friends that have committed murder. Uh, one of my friends was shot by an off-duty officer at a bar in Miami at two in the morning because he wanted to fight him and he pulled out a knife and the off-duty officer pulled out a gun and that's the end of his story. I knew him since we were eight years old. He was actually the first kid that I knew in my neighborhood and um, he had a lot of problems. He, he, he dealt with a lot of stuff. I've got another friend, um, more of an acquaintance, but still a friend that, that I knew from my neighborhood who got drunk at a bar and got into a fight with the security guard and went back to his house and picked up his gun and went back and shot the security guard and he killed him. Um, I've got another, you know, kid from the block that I grew up around who was in a high speed chase with the police in a stolen car. He, cr he crashed the car going like a hundred miles an hour and he died plus a few other people who I didn't know died along with him in that car. I've got another friend who lost his mind smoking crack and killed his mom and his sister and his sister was pregnant. Um, it, it's hard because I, I was actually really close with that friend. I, I knew him for a while and I remember we used to carpool together when we had the same job and I, I would pick him up in the morning and it, it was hard because 
I, I couldn't wrap my head around that one. That one was really, really difficult for me to digest. Uh, I, I remember him picking up his little sister from school uh, when we would like get off of work and I would drive him sometimes and he would help her with her homework until his mom got home and his mom worked for the police department and and I knew them, like I knew them well. Um, and And it's just weird because things feel so disconnected now. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not that person anymore and that was so long ago but those memories are still there and I still remember those people. And I just sometimes feel like, man, like why me? Why was I so fortunate to get out? And I can't attribute it to like anything else but a little bit of luck and, and some hard work. But but it's not like I worked hard to get out of that. It just kind of, it just kind of happened. It, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I wanted to share this story. It's It's one of those things that, that it's always on my mind. And I always think about like, how different my life could have been had I not done a few different things or had my mom not moved me out of Miami and and uh, if I would have just kept doing what I was doing. It, and, and again, I don't even know why I'm making this video. I don't know if this is going to help anyone. I don't even know if there's a point to this, but it just feels like it's one of those things that I want to kind of like talk about. When I think about all those things and I think about where I'm at now and I think about like how long ago that was, I'm older now, I'm like grown up and my life is just so different from how it was when I grew up, you know? I mean, I've, I've, I've gone from living a block away from the projects to living in a gated community with a house that had four bedrooms and a three car garage and a swimming pool in it that I owned. It's, it's weird, I, I mean, maybe if, if anybody is out there who comes from a similar background, because I know in a lot of the comments that I get, I get a lot of people who say that, you know, I'm that we're a lot alike. Maybe me talking about this stuff and showing people that they can get out and that life does get better and things can change for you no matter what your circumstances are. Maybe that's that's the point of making this video. Maybe sharing that, like I, you know, I, I say a lot in some of my videos, if it helps one person, then it's worth making this video. You know, it doesn't take a lot of energy or effort to turn on this camera and just edit a straight talking head video. and. I kind of enjoy that more and I think that the response I got from that poll that I put out was that a lot of people prefer that and they like the realness of just me talking to the camera. I like sharing my story because if I can change one life or if I can just help one person be a little bit better or stay on track in the right direction to like better their lives, then then why not? Why not share these things and why not try to help someone out there even if it's a complete stranger because sometimes I sit and I think back and I wish that I could have gone back and maybe helped my friends that got in too deep. I remember White Boy, um, he's the one that, that got shot by the off-duty cop at the bar. He was the last person I saw when I moved out of Miami uh, when I was 17 years old. He helped me pack my car. You know, it's crazy because he's the first kid that I met in my neighborhood and he's the last person that I saw when I left my neighborhood. And I went back to visit Miami while he was still alive and I, I went and I saw him and he was just, you know, drunk from the night before. He was sleeping in his parents' garage on a, on a cot with a TV and an Xbox and, and that was his life. I think he was about 25 or 26 at that point. He died a couple years after that and I, I always think like, like, man, I wish he would have been able to make it out with me. I, I knew him as a kid, and I knew that he had a good heart, too. But the streets just got a hold of him. The streets had a hold of me. And, you know, thinking about these things, it's hard. It's it's hard to really, really wrap my head around it. And it's hard to, to be, I don't know, happy that things worked out for me. Because there's like this, this survivor's guilt is what they call it, or what I, I think it is. Um, because I survived and I got out of it, I feel bad for all the people that didn't, and I feel bad for all my friends that were stuck in it and still are stuck in it. I have a lot of friends who are in and out of jail who maybe their fate wasn't as bad as some of the ones I mentioned in this video, but they still have you know a long criminal record. They live at home with their parents or in their grandparents' house, and they never left their neighborhood, and they're still doing the same thing. They can't get work because they're felons, and they're just... They're just basically sitting around waiting to die or go back to jail. And I'm really fortunate that I'm not there. I'm really fortunate that I got out. And I hope that, you know, this video helps one person get out. And if and if it does, then it's worth making, like I said. I don't know, guys. I'm, 
I'm going to keep making content like this until I feel like I've I've said enough about this stuff and maybe I'll go back to the programming stuff, maybe I won't, maybe I'll move on to other things, maybe I'll talk about bullshit I see on the internet, maybe I'll just talk about whatever I want until I find what I want out of this channel. Um, it's been awesome so far to just know that so many people have been so supportive. I'm in a good spot mentally, I'm not like in massive depression right now. I was just kind of unhappy making the content that I was making and I was trying so hard to make like YouTube type videos and I remember that I didn't start this to be, you know, one of those YouTubers who just throws a bunch of B-roll on something and does a voiceover and tries to act like he knows what he's talking about. I'd, I never wanted to be that person on here. I wanted to keep it real and, and it seems that that's what people want from me. So that's what I'm going to keep giving you. And if this type of content isn't for you, I get it. I'm sorry. I... I'm just gonna have to do what I have to do in order to keep myself in it because I I wanna do this. I wanna share my story and I wanna talk about my experiences and I wanna just put this stuff out there for anyone who might be able to benefit from it. If you found this helpful or interesting or you benefited from it in any way, just hit that like button because it will help out my channel and it will help get this video out to more people and I'll see you next time.